Commission Parade. And good evening, us or good afternoon, us we go rather. I'm Storm Team 10 Chief Meteorologist Molly Matat here with my other two Storm Team 10 Meteorologists, James mm -hmm. Tramp and Mike Vuato. And we are giving you special lake effect coverage this afternoon. As we all know, classes have been canceled for SUNY Oswego from 12 p.m. on. Now we want to talk about a little bit about what's happening right now, what happened, the timeline that built up to class cancellation, and we also want to give you a quick look at your Storm Team 10 forecast for this lake effect activity. So as you guys know, classes have been canceled. Did you guys have any classes canceled today? I did not have any classes canceled today, but when they did cancel, it was like a celebration at my hall. Absolutely. I think everyone was pretty thrilled, especially myself making an 8 a.m. commute to my class. I knew that those conditions out there were, were pretty bad. So we're going to take a look at the regional radar right now, if we could bring that up. Mike Votto, why don't you explain mm -hmm. to us what's happening on this regional radar? Yep, sure. So basically, we have a lake effect snow band, as you can see by the blue that's shown on the radar screen, sitting basically right in Oswego County, right over the campus. You can see it's got a little bit of a connection with up in Lake Huron and to Georgian Bay to the left side of the screen. As you, you can see, there's a connection with it going across the lake, a pretty consolidated band that's hitting the area with, associated with it. We have high winds, heavy snowfall rates of an inch to two inches per hour. Yes, and actually if we look at those high wind rates, you can see that right now uh, we are under a lake effect warning for Oswego County until 7 p.m. This, uh, this evening. Now what brings with that is that visibility is down to a quarter mile at times. Not all the time, but at times we're down to a quarter mile. Wind chills are now below zero because of those winds out of the west at 20 to 30 miles per hour with gusts up to 40 miles per hour. Now, James, these conditions are usually associated with lake effect. Now, how does this impact our travel? Our travel is going to be severely impacted, especially if you're on 104 in Oswego or, or anywhere even around the campus or around Oswego. That snow, you won't be able to see when you're driving. The sidewalks are covered. It's a very dangerous situation. Yes, absolutely. And actually, meteorologist Jack Tiber had just given me a call before we started this coverage, and he wanted to let the viewers know that you should absolutely not tailgate on the road because Mm -hmm. The roads essentially are snow covered at this point. It's impossible to get those plows to move fast enough to get the roads cleared. So definitely traction is down. Don't tailgate your, your driver in front of you because if he breaks fast, you're going to have to mm -hmm. break equally as fast. Impossible. And there have been all, several uh, rear end collisions mm -hmm. reported yes. on Route 104 and on Route 481. Several mm -hmm. accidents reported on 481 as well. Nice. But what he also wanted to let us know is an interesting kind of weather phenomena. With lake effect system, winds are coming primarily from the west. And what that's doing is on Bridge Street, which runs, par which runs perpendicular to them, it's making it very hard to see the traffic lights. Um, with those bad winds, snow is building up on the traffic lights, and it really is hard to see if the, uh, if the light is red or green. So I think the general consensus here is just take your time. No matter where you have to go, there's not that much of a rush that you know, yeah. you, you put your own life. And also, don't risk. go out if you don't have to. Only go out if you absolutely have to Yes, go out. absolutely. Yes. And actually, that's a great point mm -hmm. because there is a travel advisory now for the city of Oswego as well as Oswego County. It's in, it's in effect until 1 p.m. tonight, until further, or from 1 p.m. until further notice. There's no unnecessary travel on city streets and no parking on city streets from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. So make sure you keep mm -hmm. that advised if you have evening plans. Speaking of evening plans, there is a hockey game tonight for the OSU Lakers playing uh, mm -hmm. in the SUNYAC uh, finals, playing Fredonia this evening. So if you live on campus, you might want to brave the snow for that. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, if, and what's nice is because of this travel advisor, if you don't want to go out in the snow, we will be doing live coverage here at WTOP at 6 p.m. So make sure you tune in for that. Now going back to the timeline, we wanted mm -hmm. to give a quick OSU plug. Um, now going back to the timeline, if we could flash that up yeah. really quick. We were talking about, um, oh actually let me get to the timeline, there we go. Now at 3 a.m., an Arctic front pushes through, and about two inches fell at 3 a.m. because mm -hmm. of that. Now, Mike, can you tell us more about exactly what an Arctic front is and how that affects our mm -hmm. weather? So basically what an Arctic front is, it's a cold front, but except it's an Arctic cold front. So it's that frigid Arctic air that's locked up in Canada that came down across and crossed a relatively warm lake surface, and it allowed that moisture to get picked up as the air flowed across it, and that's currently why we're getting the lake effect snow. Absolutely, and region. that's how lake effect snow works, is when cold air moves over a warm mm -hmm. um, water, water. A, a warm body of water, it actually sucks up the moisture from Lake Ontario and puts it um, in the air, and that's how yep. lake effect bands form. Now, yeah. James, you were actually awake during the 3 a.m. Yes, snow squall. So, so can you tell us a little bit about our conditions at that point? I was watching the radar. I was getting super excited, and I knew at around 3 a.m. that Arctic front was going to move through, and it dumped some heavy snow. 
I, could, I was looking out my window, just blizzard conditions. Absolutely. It was, it was now awful. at 3 a.m., that doesn't necessarily impact travel. I don't know if any of you were traveling mm -hmm. at 3 a.m., but that was a pretty significant indicator. A precursor, yeah. A pretty yeah. significant, a pretty significant um, episode of foreshadowing, I guess you could say, yeah. of the conditions to come. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go back to the timeline, you can see at 7.30 a.m., the band starts to set up over campus. At that point, it was actually pretty organized. If you look at radar mm -hmm. from 7.30 a.m., it was very organized across campus. We had blustery winds with gusts of up to 40 miles per hour, and on top of that, we had one to two inch per hour snowfall rates. Now, what that does is not only is visibility being impaired with snow coming down, those were very large dendritic mm -hmm. clump flakes. Basically, what dendrites are is they are those perfect snowflakes that you might see, the perfect crystals. And when they fall, they tend to clump together, especially in severe uh, weather phenomena mm -hmm. like this. So not only did you have large flakes coming from the sky, we had 40 mile per hour mm -hmm. winds that were yeah. just blowing yeah. around that freshly mm -hmm. dropped snow. Um, and that certainly impacts visibility. Yes, and uh, I live at Hart Hall on the sixth floor, and I was getting snow on my windows because of high winds picking up the snow as it was dropping and sticking out. Yes, and window. actually, we yeah. have a ton yes. of pictures that we got in from Twitter. Thank you guys for tweeting your pictures. We'll get to those in just a second. And a lot of them are of the snow buildup on the windows because it's yeah. just so mm -hmm. cold and the winds are so strong that it blows it's it right on the window too. and it, yeah. it can't do anything else but yeah. stick. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, if we go back to the timeline really quick, just to time this out. Now, we had all of these things happening at 3 a.m., at 7.30 a.m. During your morning commute to classes, you probably saw that these conditions were wide out and very hard to travel in. Oswego cancels mm -hmm. class at 9.30 a.m. Now, what's interesting about this class cancellation, we'll talk about this after we get done with the timeline. Um, they sent out a text message first and then the call. They went yep. through the Albany mm -hmm. SUNY alert system. At 10.30 a.m., there was a reported 9.5 inches of new snow in Oswego. That is starting from last night into at by 10 a.m. Um, this morning. We had 9.5 inches of new snowfall. I can't remember the last time we got that much snow in that in less than mm -hmm. a day yeah. in Oswego, especially from Lake Effect. That is almost unheard of. And then if we progress to 10:45 a.m., we were down to 250 foot visibility, and that you can't even <laughs> see the hood of your car yes, at that point. Yeah. Definitely very bad traveling conditions. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about the class cancellation. I was, um, I have 8 a.m. class, I have mesometeorology. Mm -hmm. I had that class and then we ended and we were all really shocked that classes weren't canceled. And there was a backlash on Twitter. All students were mm -hmm. taking very mm -hmm. negative um, effects, but also kind of lighthearted. I mean, we are a Swigo, we are not strangers to snow, but today was just unheard of the conditions. I saw someone tweeted a uh, hashtag SUNY Antarctica, and that's certainly <laughs> what it felt like today. Um, what did you guys think about the class cancellation? Well, uh, personally, I thought we were never going to get a class cancel cancellation because sometimes the sweet mm -hmm. goes like that. It could snow so heavy and still not get a cancellation. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. I was thinking the same thing. Like, I, I didn't think they were going to cancel it, but just seeing the conditions out there, it, I believe it was the right call. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. At, at right 8.30, call. I couldn't yep. see um, yeah. Lee Hall from Shinneman, mm -hmm. and those buildings mm -hmm. are yeah. right next to each other. Definitely mm -hmm. a scary situation. Um, but if we go back to the timeline, I believe. I want to go through a couple Twitter pictures. At the Mitch Lamb tweeted us this. This is from the Campus Center. And like we said before, these are those high winds that are just mm -hmm. blowing snow mm -hmm. all around. And it has nothing to do but stick to windows. And yes. that's how cold it is right yes. now. Um, if we go ne to the next oh, wow. picture, we have uh, Mr. Riser. This is from the PL Suites. This is from the, six, uh, the top floor of the PL Suites. Definitely not uh, necessarily a penthouse view today. Um, as you can see, almost white out conditions, you can barely see mm -hmm. that uh, house in the back. So mm -hmm. obviously, let's talk a little bit about commuter students and um, students who live mm -hmm. not only just directly mm -hmm. off ca campus, but people who are commuting from areas like Syracuse or Rochester. How do you think, um, mm -hmm. how do you think that impacted them today? Personally, I think they should have canceled <laughs> classes earlier because right. commuter mm -hmm. students have to drive so far in the dangerous weather conditions, and it just, it's a liability for them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I know um, road conditions, not just in Oswego County, but in other yeah, counties as yeah. well. Um, what's interesting about Lake Effect, as we all know, is that it's very localized. As you can see on the original radar, there was just a very narrow strip of snow. So while it was sunny size in Syracuse, mm -hmm. you could be easily deceived yeah. that, yeah. hey, I'm going to commute to class today and mm -hmm. it's going to be no big deal. Yeah. But the second you get in that Lake Effect van, conditions yeah. change. Absolutely. That's instantly. the thing where Lake Effect yeah. snow. It could be sunny somewhere one minute, but when you drive... Driving north into the area, and next minute it could be whiteout conditions, can't see the, even the hood of your car. And Absolutely, just, yeah, and that's exactly dangerous. what happened yeah. today. Mm -hmm. As you progress mm -hmm. farther northward into Oswego, conditions just got worse and worse. Mm -hmm. um, if we go back to the pictures, we have a couple more. At Julie Barrier sent us this. This was her walk to Mahar this morning from just outside the campus center. You can see on the right, that's Penfield, if you can make it out. And I saw 
you know, usually in the snow, I see those few Oswegonians that think, oh, I can get away without a jacket today. Maybe, yeah. you know, I don't have to wear the yeah. snow boots yeah. today. <laughs> Everyone had their gear yeah. on today. Yeah. Today was the day to wear those snow mm -hmm. boots yeah. and those big winter jackets because it was a cold one. Now, this is from Christina Reese. Um, she is a Storm Team 10 meteorologist as well. She will join us after the break in just a couple minutes. And this is walking out of Shinneman. Now, I did this. I made this same walk today from Shinneman to Campus Center. Not that much of a distance, but man, that was a hard walk. <laughs> and the new doors of Shinneman, as you know, Shinneman is our new science building. The doors actually run kind of parallel to the wind. So you could see people very mm. openly struggling trying to open those doors today. The winds were just too mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. It was just too cold and people couldn't open the doors. And not to mention when you walk in the front doors of Shinneman, those, ro those um, floors rather <laughs> are so slippery. I will fully own up to the fact that I yes. Wiped yeah. out pretty hard today um, going to my class, and I was a little embarrassed, but there's really nothing that you can do no. except no. for try to maintain. Um, and as we move on, at Stairsmaster76, Michael Stairs sent us this beautiful shot, well, beautiful for some, uh, from Mahar looking onto the quad, really just a complete whiteout on campus. I can't remember the last time we saw whiteout mm. conditions like this on campus. Snow is almost reaching the branches on that tree. You can tell how high that drift is. Pretty high. Pretty right, high. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, and then mm -hmm. if we have one more picture, this is actually not a Julie Barrier. That is unfortunately mislabeled. But this is a picture right outside the campus center, and it is just an absolute whiteout today. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we just got information. We were talking about the class cancellation and exactly how it works. We did just find out that the person who makes the ultimate call is the president of the college, Deborah Stanley. Now, the only thing that, the only thing that um, kind of puzzles me a little bit is that the timing of the cancellation. And here's what happened with the alert system. This happened in my Spanish class today. Mm -hmm. There was a text sent out that said, SUNY Oswego, all classes canceled. And many students went home because they assumed that that meant all classes were canceled from mm -hmm. that point mm -hmm. on. Um, however, if, you get the, um, if you're signed up for the alert system like you are, you yep. get a text mm -hmm. message first, then you get the phone call, and then you get an email. Yeah, yeah. The phone call mm -hmm. and the email both said afternoon and evening classes. Mm -hmm. So yep. that is from 12 p.m. onward. So mm -hmm any classes after that are canceled mm -hmm. tonight but mm -hmm. what really stunk for some students is that they still had to make those commutes from yes, your yep. 1020s to your 1115 mm -hmm. and from your 1115 mm -hmm. home yeah. how did you yes. guys do with your commutes today well I mean it set up for some confusion as to when the classes ended and when you know mm -hmm. we weren't gonna have any more classes but my commute was was uh, Pretty treacherous today. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And mm -hmm. professors often cancel classes at their own discretion, mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily um, the college's final, uh, the college's mm -hmm. overall call of classes. Your professors can cla uh, cancel class as well. So always make sure that you check your Oswego email and your mm -hmm. Angel account to see if mm -hmm. those cancellations happen. Now we will be joined right after the break with other Storm Team 10 meteorologists, Rick Arukas and Christina Reese. Um, and we will have more look at the Lake Effect event today, as well as your forecast as what you can expect for the next couple days. So please stay with us here at WTOP 10. <clears throat> oh, I thought. So what do we do? All right, so this is when you're going to take the green screen. All right, switch out. All right. Get out. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me back. Hey, did you tell your parents about us? Let's skip first period together. 
Did you get all my texts? Is practice over yet? Where are you at? Are you with your friends? That's L-A-A-A-A-M-M-E-E-E. -E -E. Capital X, lowercase o, capital X, lowercase o. I love you. JK, I hate you. JK. Are you ignoring me? We're in a huge fight right now. Is this something I did? I can see your lights on. I'm coming this over. What'd you dream about? Did me? I'm lonely. Holla back. Holla back. Let's try something new. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Welcome back to WTOP 10's live coverage of the Lake Effect storm currently affecting our area. I'm joined this break by Storm Team 10 meteorologist Rick Garukas and Christina Reese. Thank you guys for joining me so much. Now we want to talk a little bit about this Lake Effect system that's currently affecting us right now. If you haven't been watching, we do have a Lake Effect warning for our area until 7 p.m. this evening, as well as a travel advisory for Oswego County. Um, no one's necessary travel on city streets and there will be no parking on streets from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. tonight. Now before we talk about some of that, I want to get a quick look at our forecast with Storm Team 10 meteorologist James Trim over at the James Tr uh, over at the green screen rather. James. Thanks, Molly. Well, we're going to look at our uh, projected snowfall map right now. As you can tell, the heaviest amount is over Oswego and Oswego City. We're projected to pick up between 18 to 24 inches. That's just a projection. That's not for certain right now. But we do, uh, as you can tell from this map behind me, we have a lake effect snow warning for Oswego County as well as Oneida County. And the Tug Hill area is underneath a lake effect snow watch as of, as of right now. Looking at our future cast for 1 p.m., yeah, as you can tell, we do have that band setting up across Lake Ontario. Oswego is right in its crosshairs, so we can expect a lot of snow for uh, this afternoon. Futurecast 4 p.m. As you can tell, that band is still set up across Oswego County as well as SUNY Oswego campus. Uh, we're still we're going to get quite a bit of snow from the system. This band is not moving. As we look at the Futurecast for 7 p.m., it lifts a little bit north, but as you can tell, us, the campus is right on the south end of that lake effect snow band. Looking at our forecast for this afternoon, we're underneath the lake effect snow warning. As you can tell, for Oswego County, from seven, until 7 p.m. tonight, we're going to pick up 8 to 12 inches by Friday. But remember, we have those winds 20 to 25 miles an hour out of the west and a temperature of 17 degrees. As you, as you know, with those winds picking up that fast, the temperature is going to drop well below 17 degrees for a um, wind chill. Looking at our lake effect snow watch, which goes from 1 p.m. Thurs Thursday to 1 p.m. Friday for Oswego County, we're going to pick up an additional 7 inches of snow with 20 to 30 mile an hour winds uh, for that day. That's going to drop the temperature even more. If you have to go out for 18 degrees, below eight, probably around 10 degrees of that much wind. So if you're walking for classes or uh, even commuting, that's some dangerous wind chills and some dangerous weather conditions. You can also follow us online at WTOP10 on Twitter and also on Facebook at facebook.com slash WTOP10 or uh, you can email us at meteorology at w WTOP10.com. Thank you so much, James. Now, taking a look at that forecast, it looks like Lake Effect is really going to impact our travel and our other plans for the next couple of days. Rick, what do, you have to, what do you have to say about our trend of Lake Effect? Well, the good thing is that it looks like as of now, look at the little peak at the radar, the band has gone a little bit further north. And right. the funny thing about Lake Effect is it's so narrow that it is probably snowing harder on the other side of the powerhouse right now than it is on campus. Absolutely. And so it looks like we are on pace as we head towards dinner time to maybe get a break from this, get some chan a chance to dig out before the next opportunity of Lake Effect snow arrives tomorrow afternoon. Right. And as we saw yesterday with our Lake Effect event as well, those bands tend to form towards our area they kind of impact our travel and they tend to just travel north into Watertown and then since dissipate and that's the same thing that's happening now so it there is an end in sight to lake effect but like that forecast said Christina the lake effect is just gonna pick right back up on Thursday yeah like I talked about in the evening news last night that lake effect is just going to continue to hit us and it's it's persistent it likes to just 
layout across this, but it's also interesting that usually Oswego isn't it right in the middle to get nailed by something this persistent. But it'll be interesting to see how the next couple of days definitely pan out. Absolutely. And going by the climatology of Oswego, we are no strangers to lake effect. In fact, lake effect does account for most of our annual accumulation of snow, not those big storm systems that come on through. It's those little tiny bands of lake effect that tend to sit over us and move over us and oscillate. Now, um, as those bands do affect us, it does have kind of a trend to not hit Oswego. Campus has been missed on countless occasions. I know all three of us were on the OWLS project, the Lake Effect Research Grant for SUNY Oswego and several other schools, and we didn't have any bands during that project that really stuck over Oswego. This is, since we started classes, has actually been the first occurrence of bands that stick over Oswego. Well, ba yeah, basically this band is pretty much a textbook style band that you would look for to hit the city of Oswego. The wind is, is slightly, it's almost straight west, but it's got a slight northerly tilt to it. And what that does is it sets the band up right down 104. It That's makes cool. landfall near Oswego, and then you can follow it down 104 to between Mexico and Parrish. And typically with like effect, it'll sit in one area for a few hours, and then it'll move for a bit. So always a tough call on the, on the classes, because you could literally have classes off, and then it gets sunny again. Absolutely, and we've seen occurrences, you know, it's not anyone's fault that they cancel classes, they do have our best interest at heart, but sometimes with Lake Effect it's just so localized that you forecast it for a certain area at a certain time and it just completely goes haywire. And that's not just these bands recently, that's been Lake Effect for this entire, for Oswego's really entire history. It's because it's such a small scale weather feature that small scale changes can affect that and that goes back to the wind shift. If the wind shift just a little bit more to the south, this band would be hitting Tug Hill. If we had a straight west flow, it'd be hitting straight into Tug Hill. However, that little curvature of wind is putting it right on the city of Oswego. Now, for tomorrow, we do have a watch. Now, what kind of things could happen in the next couple hours that might give us this kind of um, event once again? Well, as we uh, head through the, out the rest of the afternoon and evening, we're going to have another one of those Arctic uh, cold fronts approach that Mike right. was talking about in our last segment. And what that'll do is it'll shift the band north for a while towards Watertown, and we'll get out of it and we'll have time to dig out. But then tonight, late tonight, we might have another burst of snow, and then during the day tomorrow, sometime tomorrow, that band could come back over near Oswego, and we might be dealing with this all over again right. with the whiteout conditions, the gusty winds. Absolutely. So, Christina, how much accumulation do you expect for the next couple of days? A good chunk. More than we've seen probably for since we've been back from winter break. I'm seeing possibly up to a foot by Friday. It's, it's really going to be interesting to see how all of this pans right. out. Going into tonight, a few inches, but I really think, I do agree with Rick that it's going to shift a little bit south, and we'll see almost like a repeat tomorrow that I'm looking forward to, that we would see a good couple inches within right. a couple hours. Now, do again. you guys think in magnitude, do you think tomorrow's event will be less, worse, or uh, worse or better than today? I mean, not by the meteorology standpoint. We are loving this snow, you know, bring us more, but by travel conditions, do you think it's going to be worse than today, better than today, about on the same point? What do you guys think? I think once the second band sets up again later tomorrow afternoon, around the time people get ready to go to dinner, I think it'll have the same intensity, but there's always that question on the placement. You remember, you're dealing with something only five miles wide. Exactly. There's a possibility that Fulton could be getting really heavy snow, and we just have partly to mostly sunny skies here. Absolutely, and why don't we take a quick look? I want to take a look at this um, lake effect snow watch that I've brought up here issued by the National Weather Service. They are seeing accumulations of close from 8 to 12 inches through the, eve, the, or through the evening. rather. Additional snow potential accumulating more than 7 inches Thursday afternoon through Friday afternoon. So it sounds like they are forecasting a lot of snow accumulation into tomorrow. So we could see, you know, maybe, maybe that means that tomorrow will be less winds. What happens with lake effect is when you have the, gust, uh, the gusty winds like we do in Oswego, your accumulations actually tend to go down. Now travel conditions are very dismal, but when wind blows, you don't get that accumulation. It doesn't stay up in one spot. I know um, I live by the village, and in that middle terrain part, there's a little bit of a hill, and if you walk past there now, at the top of the hill, there's no snow. Just very little snow, you know, packed in between the grass blades, but as you head down, that's when you get into that really deep snow, and it's because of the wind and the drifts, and you can see that on buildings as well. So um, definitely make sure that you stay with Storm Team 10 for your updates on your um, lake effect conditions. Now this also says that it can vary from locally heavy snow in narrow bands to clear skies just a few miles away and like Rick was saying, lake effect is such a localized event that just a small shift, you know, it can be sunny in Syracuse and it can be very dismal here. So how do you think that really affects our forecasting of lake effect? I think it makes the forecasting all that more difficult because 
it's such a narrow band usually with like effect that it's hard to pinpoint it, especially with a wind shift. Slightest wind shift will hike it north or south. And those changes happen like in the blink of an eye. I know I was following Facebook earlier and I saw fellow meteorology students like Mike Ginnick and Jake Mahalan posted pictures at like approximately 10.30 this morning of just white out conditions. Absolutely. You could not see out that window. And then by noon, it was clear again. Yes, absolutely. And I think the really key factor here is the winds. While we are seeing very large accumulation, it's those winds that blow the snow around and put visibility close to zero. And that snow is fresh. So while it, while it um, snows, rather, and then as the wind uh, brushes it by, that's what impacts your visibility and that's what impacts your travel. Yes, and for those of us that were on the OWLS research project and we learned about lake effect snow all winter break, we found that sometimes if you have a lake effect band not over you but either just north or south of you, the winds can be stronger. So there, you might not have snow falling, but you're going to have that snow blowing off the ground back onto the roadways. That can reduce visibilities too. So I think that people need to keep in mind that even if it's not snowing here, it still could be dangerous. Right, absolutely. And that goes out to any students commuting from rather off campus, from other cities. You know, I know some professors say this and some professors don't, but sometimes you have to kind of, even if your professor doesn't cancel class, you kind of have to weigh the risk that do I want to drive through this lake effect band. As three students who have all driven through lake effect bands, we know that it is no joke when you drive through those visibility is down to zero and winds are very dangerous. Um, like I said before, several accidents reported on 481 from Syracuse to Oswego and on Route 104 in Oswego. As I said earlier, Storm Team ten, uh, meteorologist Jack Tiber had told me that there are several accidents on 104, mainly rear end collisions. So if you do have evening plans tonight, while we do have a travel advisory, I would advise you to stay home. But if you do have, um, if you do end up traveling, make sure that you take it slow and um, take, it, take it nice and slow on the roads and make sure that you're very safe. Now, like I said, we are under a lake effect warning right now until 7 p.m. tonight. At 7 p.m. we start that great uh, SUNY Oswego SUNYAC playoff game against Fredonia. If you're on campus and you feel like braving the elements, make sure you get out there to the, um, to the arena. But if you do want to stay in and stay warm, make yourself a nice cup of hot cocoa and turn into WTOP10. Um, you can access them live online, WTOP10.com slash live, or you can tune into channel 10.1 on your television and enjoy the game from home. Watch the Lakers take it home. Now, any last thoughts about our lake effect before we wrap up, the, before we wrap up our broadcast? Well, I actually, I actually saw an almost accident on campus today. We, uh, I was looking outside of Shinneman, between Shinneman and the campus center, and we had somebody drive up onto the sidewalk because they couldn't see the road. Right. They thought it was the road. And, they threw it in reverse pretty quick and got out of there. But can you imagine if there was a student walking and didn't see him? I mean, that's that's a scary thought, and we hope that it never gets to that kind of um, kind of seriousness. But you know, I think we all learned we all, what we all learned today. I guess today's lesson is, you know, Oswego is no stranger to lake effect. It's the climatology of the area. Oswego has been getting lake effect since Oswego was here and a lake was here. So it's not something that we shouldn't expect. You know, we shouldn't be shocked when things like this happen. We knew it was going to snow. It's winter in Oswego. Granted, the past few years have been relatively right, uh, light, rather. We know that things like this are going to happen, but it comes down to really just taking precautions and bracing yourself for lake effect. What are some things that you can do to keep yourself safe in lake effect storms, Christina? Especially for drivers, do not tailgate. People, if they try to stop, they're go they will probably go through that stop sign if they don't stop fast enough. Also, if you do stop behind them, wheels have the tendency of spinning out. They won't go as fast as you think they're going to. And going back to what Rick said, even pedestrians have to look where you're going. You don't want to collide with someone or even collide into a car that might be Absolutely. stuck or trying to get out anywhere. And definitely you have to bundle up today with those gusty Absolutely. winds. Your exposed skin is just not the best thing to deal with. Absolutely, and what wind chill does is as it blows across your skin, it makes it feel so much colder than it already is because it's taking any warm air that your body's creating and just putting it into the atmosphere. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you have those gloves, those hats. I saw a couple people with face masks on today. Go for it if you really want to. I mean, I know I was feeling the wind burn as I was walking to class, and now when you put snow in that mix and the occasional grapple, not necessarily with this conditions, but we have seen ice pellets before, when that stuff is blowing around in the wind and it hits your skin, man, does it hurt. So make sure you take your necessary precautions. Unfortunately, my winter coat broke today. Huh. What, what a coincidence. So... Uh, I will be making a trip into town at some point to get a new winter <laughs> might jacket. Might take a couple days. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. You might take a couple days to get to TJ Maxx, but you know. <laughs> um, but overall, just today, I think we learned to really kind of cater to our lake effect needs here in Oswego. We really need to, even the average viewer, you don't need to be a meteorologist to be educated on lake effect. Make sure you check out um, WTOP10 on Twitter to get your latest updates. 
don't be afraid to, you know, ask your resident meteorologist what's going to happen today and make sure that when you do um, make your travels today, you bundle up and stay nice and warm. Now signing off from the Storm Team 10 team, I'd like to thank meteorologist Mike Watto, James Trim, we have Ruth Garukas and Christina Reese. Thank you guys for coming on such short notice to this great uh, breaking lake effect coverage. Uh, on behalf of the team, I'm Chief Meteorologist Molly Matat signing off with you. Please be safe out there and enjoy the game tonight. Thank you.